My Halloween costume is literally lying all over the floor. I better make sure you can't see that. <laughs> Hello everybody, Nikki Mara here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you've all had a very spooky week and are ready for yet another fun ranking video. And as many of you may know, the month of October is my element. I love Halloween and all things spooky. And believe me when I tell you, I have some super fun videos coming up in the next couple of weeks. And just as a little sneak peek, make sure to keep an eye out for my YouTube shorts this coming week as that will be the place where I reveal my Halloween costume. And likewise, next week's video is actually a full costume tutorial in case you want to end up going as, well, the character I'm gonna go as. Which will leave the final Friday in October for a full vlog of my night at Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. But enough blabbing, you came here for a ranking video and that's what you're gonna get. Now, in case you weren't already aware, Disney and Freeform put out an entire list of super spooky Halloween movies for their 31 nights of Halloween. And even though there are a few movies on that list that are not specifically Disney, the majority of them are. And so today we're gonna go through the entire Disney Freeform list and rank all of the Disney movies that are gonna be shown on Freeform in the month of October. If you're new here, hi, my name is Nikki Mara and I am a Disney content creator. On this channel, we like to kick back, relax, and talk about all things Disney. So if that sounds good to you, make sure to hit subscribe down below so that way you never miss out on any future magic from me. And you can also find me on any of my other social media platforms at Nikki Mara with two Y's and two R's. Oh, and I'm on Instagram, TikTok, and Snapchat. And while normally in my YouTube videos, I go through an entire Disney topic and create a list from scratch, today, I kind of had a list created for me, which I am not gonna complain about. <laughs> but seeing as my expertise lies in the Disney company, there are a few movies on that list that aren't going to quite make it into the ranking today. So make sure to stay tuned for my disclaimers and conditions which are coming up. But of course, as always, if you would like to jump right into the ranking video, then you can head right to this timestamp. First and foremost for our disclaimers, I am not associated with the Walt Disney Company. I don't speak for the brand or the company. And so any and all opinions in this video are just my own and do not reflect those of the company. And secondly, I welcome any and all opinions surrounding these incredible Disney movies and Disney characters down in my comment section. So make sure to leave all your thoughts down below. I cannot wait to hear which of these Disney movies is your favorite around the spooky season. And thirdly, a big spoiler warning for all of the Disney movies that we are going to be talking about today. As for a part of ranking each movie, I am going to be going into some plot details, and I wouldn't want to spoil any of these incredible movies for you. So if you don't want a specific movie spoiled for you, then you can just head on up to the next number on my list. Next, moving on to our conditions for the list. All of the movies that are going to be on today's list come from the official Disney Freeform 31 Nights of Halloween for the year 2024. So right off the bat, if you're expecting to see a certain Halloween movie and it doesn't show up on my list today, I didn't make the list, I'm sorry. <laughs> but secondly, for the conditions, there are some specific movies that I am not going to be including on today's list. And these are the movies that were not created by the Walt Disney Company. There are certain movies on this list that are very tied into the Disney parks and so they will be included. But overall, if it's not one that appears on Disney Plus regularly, if it's not one that's created by the company, then we are not going to be including it in today's list. Same thing with distribution. I'm not gonna be including it if it's only distributed by Disney. And if my calculations are correct, I believe that is going to limit our list today to 23 movies. But I will say there are a lot of movies on this freeform list that I actually really love that I won't be including on today's list. So just because I'm not including it doesn't mean I don't like it. There are a lot of really great movies. And I definitely recommend tuning in for the 31 Nights of Halloween. But my friends, with all of those disclaimers and conditions out of the way, I believe we are ready to jump into ranking the 31 Nights of Halloween movies. Oh, and yes, very quickly, before we get into the list, I do want to go through the brief talking points that we are going to touch on for each individual movie. The first talking point we are going to touch on is the plot of the movie. The second talking point is my personal thoughts surrounding the movie. And the third talking point is the connection to the Halloween season. And this is really the big ticket item in this ranking list. I'm really ranking these movies based on how Halloween-ish they are. There are some truly incredible movies that I'm ranking all the way down at the bottom of my list today. And so I'll make sure to go through each one and tell you exactly why I ranked it where I did. But believe me when I say I have a top five that I am so incredibly proud of, and I really think you will be too. So sit back, relax, grab yourself a snack and a drink, and let's rank some of Disney's best Halloween movies. And here's your sign if you haven't already. Grab some water. Disney cup. Huh? But with that, friends, we are going to start today's list all the way down at the bottom at number 23. 
which is in Kanto. Now wait, before you jump to the comment section, I do have specific reasoning as to why this movie is at the bottom. And Kanto tells the story of the Familia Madrigal, who is a family living in Colombia, and they have been gifted with a very special miracle. Each of the descendants of the Madrigal family gets a gift from the miracle candle. This gift is often a relatively supernatural ability. Whether your emotions control the weather, you're able to shapeshift into different people. Having super strength or being able to grow flowers everywhere. That is... Every single one has a special ability, except for one. Mirabel, the leading character of this movie, finds herself living without a gift. And so she must learn to live her life surrounded by extraordinary people, and learn that she is no less special than anyone else in her family. Now, as for my personal thoughts on this movie, I love this movie so much. The music is absolutely incredible. I love the characters. I love the plot. I think the colors in this movie are just stunning. And so if I love this movie so much, then why does it rank literally in the last position? Well, let's get to the third talking point, which is of course the connection to Halloween. I don't know if this is just me, but I see very little connection between the movie Encanto and the Halloween season. Now, yes, a lot of the Encanto characters could technically be Halloween costumes for different family members. But to me, there's nothing really super spooky about this movie. I guess the rather supernatural gifts that the Familia has could be considered a spooky season kind of thing. But for me, when I watch this movie, I think their gifts are a lot more magical than they are like supernatural scary. There also isn't a huge tie-in from this movie to the Disney parks around the Halloween season. You can, of course, meet Mirabelle in the Magic Kingdom every day, and Bruno often does appear in the Adventure Friends cavalcade, but Neither of those experiences is available to see at the Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween party. And so in my opinion, it kind of just feels a little off to be including this movie in the list, especially when Disney has a film that's as incredible as Coco, which of course is not necessarily a Halloween movie, but still takes place around the same season with the Day of the Dead. I guess they could show Coco after Halloween, but I don't know. To me, Encanto just doesn't give super Halloween vibes. And for that reason and that reason alone, that is why Encanto is going to rank at the bottom of today's list. <laughs> if you want to see Encanto in a much higher position on a ranking list, make sure to check out my ranking Disney animated movies, because I love this movie, go into a ton of detail over in that video, and you'll see it ranked a lot higher. <laughs> but next we're moving on up to number 22 on my list which is The Incredibles. Now again, another movie that I absolutely love, ranking very, very low on my list. Let's get into it. Now The Incredibles tells the story of a family who all have superpowers. When it is announced that supers are no longer wanted in everyday life, a lot of them go into hiding and Specifically with the Incredible family, them going into hiding really does affect their familial relationship. Eventually they're able to go to a secluded area and use their powers and grow together as a family, and they end up coming out stronger than ever. As for my opinion on this movie, I absolutely love it. I think it is probably one of Pixar's best movies in their earlier years. And yeah, I think the plot and the characters are just absolutely wonderful. But again, for our third talking point, this movie doesn't have the biggest connection to Halloween. Now granted, it could definitely be argued that the Incredibles costumes are probably one of the most popular family Disney costumes that you could buy on Shop Disney. And so I totally think this movie has a place on this list, especially because young viewers that might want to dress up as the Incredibles might be able to convince their parents to join in the fun too. And so while I definitely do think this movie has a secure place on this list, it still doesn't really give me the most Halloween vibes. I think the closest thing to Halloween vibes we could get is Syndrome's bright orange hair. <laughs> but yeah, I really love this movie. I have no issue with it being on the list. I, I just don't get the most Halloween vibes from it. But next, we're moving on up to number 21 on my list, which is Aladdin. Now, another movie that I absolutely love and adore, but it's going to rank super low on the list. Let's get into it. Aladdin tells the story of the poor boy, Aladdin, <laughs> who ends up one day meeting the princess of Agrabah in the city. Through some strange events, Aladdin is able to get a hold of a magic lamp, which contains a genie that will grant him three wishes. He ends up using his wishes in various ways that he hopes will bring him closer and closer to winning the heart of Princess Jasmine. Proving his bravery by not only defeating Jafar, the Grand Vizier of Agrabah, but also freeing his friend the genie. Now again, 
for my opinion on this movie, I think it is a really great animated film. I love the setting, I love the characters, I love the music in this movie. But again, why does it rank so low on the list? The final category of our talking points. I really truly don't get the most Halloween vibes from this movie either, although I will say it definitely does rank above the other two movies we've talked about because of the character Jafar. Jafar, the royal vizier, is honestly a very scary villain character. He definitely feels like he belongs within Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween Party, and actually even ends up showing up in the Hocus Pocus villain Spectacular when he is conjured by the Sanderson sisters. And so while overall this movie doesn't feel like it really super connects to the holiday, I will definitely rank it higher than anything else so far because of its tie-in to the Disney parks around the Halloween season. But next we're going to move on up to number 20 on my list, which is Monsters, Inc. Now, Monsters, Inc. tells the story of James P. Sullivan and Mike Wazowski, two of the coolest monsters in the Pixar universe. Sully is one of the top scares in Monstropolis, and of course, monsters scare children in order to receive the energy from their screams. Eventually, our friendly monster duo meets Boo, the adorable human child, whom they disguise and bring into the monster realm, which they have to because children are actually toxic to monsters. After many shenanigans, it's eventually learned that laughter is actually a much better power source for Monstropolis. And so Mike, Sully, and the gang come out with a brand new perspective. Now, as for my thoughts on Monsters, Inc., I am actually not the biggest Monsters, Inc. fan. Sorry. I like the story, but I do have to say this one is not one of my favorites amongst the Pixar movies. Specifically from the Pixar studio, I love a movie that will hit me in the feels and also give me a great story. And while I do like the plotline of this movie, it doesn't really hit me in the feels as much as a lot of other great Pixar movies. But as for its tie-in to the Halloween season, I think it's pretty arguable that this could be a Halloween movie, considering the majority of the characters in this film are all monsters. And there is a big tie-in to the quote-unquote monster under your bed or the monster in the closet trope. This is definitely one that has flavorings of Halloween in it. I wouldn't necessarily draw a direct parallel between this movie and Halloween, but you definitely get the scare factor energy from it. Not that it's necessarily a scary movie, but energy of scaring being there. You know what I mean. <laughs> and so I'll say because it really is more of a Halloween energy type of movie, I'm gonna rank it above everything else we've talked about so far. But next we're gonna move on up to number 19 on my list, which is the movie Frankenweenie. Now Frankenweenie tells the story of a young Victor Frankenstein. He ends up tragically losing his pet dog. However, luckily, his science teacher gives him a very specific way on how he might be able to reunite with his dog. After he is able to bring Sparky, his lovable dog, back to life, his secret slips out to some of the other students in his school, who end up bringing back to life some other creatures. Let's leave it at that. <laughs> now, as for my thoughts on this movie, it's okay. I think overall this movie does have a good plotline. I really do enjoy the storyline of it. But the one thing I will say is I don't often rewatch this one. For the reason that I think Victor losing Sparky at the beginning of the movie is incredibly sad. Now don't get me wrong, there are a lot of Disney movies that do talk about the quote unquote afterlife aspect of life. However, I do think it's a little bit more sad when that specific topic is brought up surrounding an animal. Especially considering how cute the character of Sparky is, you just feel so bad. But as for its tie into the Halloween season, there is absolutely no denying that this is a Halloween movie. This movie was created in junction with Tim Burton, and if you know that name, you know it's definitely bound to a very spooky energy. <laughs> so yeah, while I really like this movie and I do like the plot, I often don't rewatch it too much because it kind of makes me sad a little bit. But I can't deny it's a great Halloween movie. But next, we're moving on up to number 18 on my list, which is the Disney Channel original movie, Twitches. Now, Twitches tells the story of twin sisters Apollo and Artemis, who are of course very closely named after the Greek gods. And through some strange events trying to escape an evil entity called Darkness, they find themselves transported to Earth, living separate from one another in very different lives. They experience quite a few shenanigans here on Earth, but eventually are able to reconnect and combine their powers to defeat the darkness, bringing peace back to Earth and being able to celebrate their birthdays together. Now, as for my thoughts on this movie, I do like this one quite a bit. It's definitely not one of my favorites of the Disney Channel original movies, but 
I do like the plot overall. And as for its connection to Halloween, I think the sisters' magic and the overall energy of the darkness is very applicable to the Halloween season. There is a lot of spooky energy in this movie that I definitely think fans will be able to connect to Halloween time. But this one is definitely fun and I think it appeals to a wide range of audiences. But with that we're going to move on up to number 17 on my list which is Muppets from Space. Now Muppets from Space is quite a silly movie but I do think it also has quite a nice tie into Halloween time. Now the Muppets from Space tells the story of Gonzo's origins. At the beginning of the movie we see Gonzo having these fears from a dream that he has where he is not welcome aboard Noah's Ark. And after receiving a relatively strange message in his alphabet soup which he believes are from aliens, he ends up, well, in space. <laughs> Through a ton of really weird and wacky situations, he ends up realizing that he was actually once a member of this alien group, as at the end it's revealed that they all look like him. And so at the end, Gonzo is faced with the decision of whether to stay with his alien friends, of which he technically is a family member too, or to return back to Earth with the Muppets. And I'll let you, I'll let you watch this one on your own. <laughs> now as for my personal thoughts, I think this one, much like a lot of the other Muppets movies, is incredibly wacky and just very fun and full of incredible humor. It's definitely not one of my favorites of the Muppet movies, but I do think this one is actually quite enjoyable. But as for its tie-in with the Halloween season, well, while a lot of people might not technically consider, like, space aliens a Halloween theme, I definitely do. I think there is a element about them that is very spooky, and I would definitely argue that this movie would fit into this list specifically if we're gonna include Encanto. I think this one definitely has a place on this list. <laughs> but as always with Muppet movies, it is a pleasure to spend time with Kermit and the gang and to get to see them have shenanigans other than on this planet. <laughs> but next we're gonna move on up to number 16. And 15, and 14, and 13, and 12. <laughs> Which of course, is the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise. Now don't get me wrong, I love the Pirates franchise and I love that Disney is including it in its 31 days of Halloween. But considering all of these movies are Disney and I have to talk about them in this video, I'm going to talk about them in a way that's a little bit different from every other movie. I am going to talk about this entire franchise as movie by movie in sequential order. We're going to talk about one, two, three, all the way up to five. And then after I talk about each individual movie and give you all of my thoughts and its connection to Halloween, I am going to tell you the pirate movies in my favorite order. And so we're just going to call this the pirate segment of this ranking list. <laughs> First we are starting off with Pirates of the Caribbean 1, entitled Curse of the Black Pearl. In this movie we meet Captain Jack Sparrow, the hero of the Pirates franchise. Through a bunch of strange events, as most of these movies tend to have, he meets up with Will Turner and Elizabeth Swan. Elizabeth is the governor's daughter and Will Turner is the town blacksmith. Elizabeth finds herself captured aboard the Black Pearl, which was originally Captain Jack's ship, but it has been taken over by his nemesis, Captain Barbosa. And so Jack, having to team up with Will Turner, has to sail the seas in order to rescue Elizabeth and reclaim the Black Pearl for himself. As for my thoughts on this movie, this is such an incredible movie. It was the perfect way to start off the Pirates franchise, and it also set a bar which I don't think it intended to do. As a lot of Disney rides that weren't necessarily based on a pre-existing movie, much like the Haunted Mansion or Jungle Cruise, ended up getting movies created about them. And having Pirates be the really the first one that ever came out did such an incredible job with it that eventually the movie ended up influencing the ride as opposed to the other way around. And I think the Pirates movie franchise, especially starting with this strong of a film, really helped to not only pay homage to the rides, but also make it quite enjoyable to see the ride nodding to the movie. And as for its tie-in with Halloween, I think Pirates 1 is probably the spookiest out of all of them. We get an entire segment where we get to see the curse that has been placed on the Black Pearl, which makes for a very scary chase sequence, and it's just quite enjoyable. Next up is Pirates 2, Dead Man's Chest. In this movie, we learn that Davy Jones is out to get Captain Jack for not upholding his end of a bargain. One member of Davy Jones' ship is Will Turner's father, Bootstrap Bill. Eventually, and very briefly, Will Turner does join Davy Jones' crew, but he is able to escape, promising his father that he will free him. Now, what does Davy Jones do to those who don't uphold his end of the bargain? Well, he sets the legendary Kraken after their ships. And so at the very end of this film, 
the Black Pearl along with Captain Jack Sparrow are taken down to the depths of the ocean by the Kraken. And we end off the second movie with Tia Dalma asking if everyone would go back to the ends of the earth to save Captain Jack. And they all say yes, which I guess you can assume means there's going to be a third film. <laughs> now, as for my thoughts on this movie, I love this franchise as a whole. This movie in particular is not amongst my favorites. I don't think it's bad. I just think a lot of the other Pirates movies have a lot stronger of a plotline. This movie really seems like it was created to set up the third movie, as that's where a lot of more exciting things from the specific plotline happen. I think the special effects in this movie are great, I think it has tons of great sequences, and a lot of great comedy. But overall, not the most spooky energy. Unless we're talking about Davy Jones. He definitely has some Halloween energy, we need to talk about that. <laughs> and that is definitely one meet and greet character that I do not want to see come to the Disney parks. Let's leave Davy Jones in his movie, please and thank you. <laughs> Up next is Pirates of the Caribbean 3 at World's End. Captain Barbosa, Will Turner, and Elizabeth Swan set out on an adventure to the ends of the earth to retrieve Captain Jack Sparrow. After successfully doing so, there is a meeting of the pirate lords in order to create a plan to defeat the East India Trading Company. Big spoiler alert, they do. <laughs> While this may seem like a very simple plotline of the movie itself, it is such a great film and the special effects are unreal. The final battle of this movie takes place between two pirate ships in a whirlpool. It is so cool. And this is the movie that also kind of beautifully ties up the plotline between Will Turner and Elizabeth Swan. It does a really great job of just tying that beautiful love story together and also creating a moment that we're gonna see in the future. But as for its connection to the Halloween season, again, Davy Jones is in this movie, so you could say there's some spooky energy there. I have to say, it's not the most spooky of the Pirates franchise. Next up in this Pirates adventure is Pirates of the Caribbean 4, On Stranger Tides. Now, On Stranger Tides tells the story of Captain Jack Sparrow as he sets out for the Fountain of Youth. He meets an old friend, Angelica, along the way, who ends up kidnapping him and bringing him aboard the Queen Anne's Revenge, which is the pirate ship of Blackbeard. The crew must travel to White Cat Bay in order to retrieve a mermaid's tear, then to the hidden wreckage of Ponce de Leon to retrieve two silver chalices, and finally they must bring all of these ingredients to the Fountain of Youth, where they learn you don't necessarily gain eternal youth without losing it. Again, I don't want to give away too much. You should totally watch this one. <laughs> now, as for my thoughts on this movie, I think this is perhaps one of the funniest Pirates of the Caribbean movies, while also simultaneously having an incredibly strong plot. Bonus points for mermaids if you know me and this channel and my favorite Disney characters in movies, bonus points for mermaids. <laughs> but yes, I absolutely love this one. And on the Halloween factor, quite a bit of this movie actually takes place aboard the Queen Anne's Revenge, which is Blackbeard's ship. And I would be brave enough to argue that this is probably one of the spookiest ships that we have seen in any Pirates movie. Blackbeard has a lot of really crazy abilities and also his energy totally matches that of his ship. And so Jack's time upon the Queen Anne's Revenge is super, super, creepy, like you get the chills just watching it. <laughs> and we will round out the Pirates segment of this video with Pirates of the Caribbean 5, Dead Men Tell No Tales. Now remember when we said we put a little bow on the storyline between Will Turner and Elizabeth Swan? We're gonna untie that bow for just a second. <laughs> As we learn that Jack Sparrow is out for yet another adventure. The evil Captain Salazar has been freed of his curse and he is out to get, take a wild guess, Captain Jack Sparrow. <laughs> and so Captain Jack, along with the help of the son of Elizabeth Swan and Will Turner, and spoiler alert, the daughter of Hector Barbosa, must retrieve Poseidon's trident in order to break the curse and banish Captain Salazar, returning peace to the seven seas. This one is good not the best. <laughs> Overall, I think it has really great moments of comedy, much like a lot of the other Pirates movies, but it definitely doesn't land amongst my favorites. And as for its connection to the Halloween season, I definitely think Captain Salazar and his crew can be very heavily related to Spooky Season. They are some creepy, creepy characters. But friends, it is time for my definitive ranking of the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise. And so at number 16 on my list is Pirates of the Caribbean 2, Dead Man's Chest. Up next at number 15 is Pirates of the Caribbean 5, 
Dead Men Tell No Tales. Up next at number 14 is Pirates of the Caribbean 3 at World's End. At number 13 on my list is Pirates of the Caribbean 4 on Stranger Tides. And at number 12, and technically my number one Pirates movie, is Pirates of the Caribbean 1 Curse of the Black Pearl. I love each and every single one of these movies. I absolutely love them, and I think it's a really great decision to include them in the 31 Nights of Halloween. I think a lot of these movies have really great Halloween energy, and I think they fit in just right. But next, my friends, we are moving on up to number 11 on my list which is the 2003 version of The Haunted Mansion. This movie tells the story of character Jim Evers and his family. After Jim is accused of being negligent to his wife and also his two children, he ends up taking them to this relatively spooky location for a vacation. Upon arriving at the mansion, the family meets the owner of the estate, Master Gracie. And he and his other ghost friends need a little bit of help breaking a very spooky curse. Now overall, what do I think of this movie? This one overall is not my favorite. In terms of likability, it definitely falls well below a lot of the other Pirates movies. However, what I will say is, in terms of ranking this movie for the Halloween season, it has a lot more spooky energy than any of the Pirates films, and that's why it ranks higher than all of them. When talking about the Halloween season, it is absolutely impossible not to mention The Haunted Mansion because this is the original spooky attraction that Disney created, and while we talked about Pirates being a great representation of the ride, this movie is not my favorite representation of the Haunted Mansion in movie form, but we are going to get into a really great version of its representation in the future on this list, so don't you worry. But yeah, overall, 2003 Haunted Mansion is not one of my favorites. But with that, friends, we have reached the top 10 of my list of 31 Nights of Halloween. If you have any guesses as to which movies are going to make it into the top 10, Make sure to leave them down below. I feel like you guys know me well enough to be able to guess. <laughs> but starting off our top 10 at number 10 is Halloween Town. Now Halloween Town tells the story of Marnie and her siblings, who all get a big shock when they find out that their grandmother is actually a witch and lives in a special town called Halloween Town. This town is a place where any supernatural being can live a somewhat normal life. But on her 13th birthday, Marnie finds out that she's not only a witch herself, but also that her family is wrapped up in this huge fight of good against evil. And so she and her siblings have to help prevent the evil from taking over the world. Now as for my thoughts on this movie, I think it's cute. It's definitely not one of my favorites of the Halloween season, but it is undeniably a favorite of so many specifically surrounding the Halloween season. If you are looking for a movie with spooky vibes, you need look no further. Halloween Town is a family-friendly movie that is just full of Halloween fun. But I would be lying if I said this one isn't one of my favorites and that I prefer a lot of other Halloween Disney movies over this one. Definitely recommend it. It is definitely worth your watch. I do enjoy it quite a bit whenever I do watch it, but there are some other ones that I like a little bit more. Next, moving on up to number nine on my list is the movie Maleficent. Now, Maleficent tells the story of Sleeping Beauty from the perspective of Maleficent. This movie relies on the narrator of the original Sleeping Beauty being a little untruthful. Maleficent at the beginning of the movie falls in love with the future King Stefan. When their love crumbles and he is crowned the king, he paints her as this monster to his entire kingdom. She ends up coming to Aurora's christening and cursing Aurora to get revenge on King Stefan. And spoiler alert, it is eventually Maleficent's kiss on the forehead to Princess Aurora that awakens her from her sleep-like death. Now, to be completely honest, this is not one of my favorites of the live action movies, but overall, I do get a lot of spooky energy from this movie as Maleficent is definitely a spooky character overall, as she even ranked relatively high in my ranking of Disney Halloween characters, which I will link up above for you. But yes, Maleficent is the quintessential Disney villain character, and so to include her in the 31 Nights of Halloween is definitely a good decision on Disney and Freeform. Overall, I think this movie is entertaining. It's not one of my favorites, but it does definitely give me the spooky energy I need around the Halloween season. Next, we move on up to number eight on my list, which is Hocus Pocus 2. Now, Hocus Pocus 2 is, of course, the sequel to 
a really iconic Disney movie, which we will be talking about very soon. <laughs> but yes, Hocus Pocus 2 tells the story of the return of the Sanderson sisters to the town of Salem. It gives us a little look into the sisters' youth and what it was like growing up as a family of witches. And eventually, Winifred must make the choice between her love for her sisters and omnipotent power. Now, for my opinion on this movie, I liked it. I like this movie, however, it does not hold a black flame candle, pun intended, to its original. <laughs> it was so special getting to see the three leading ladies reprise their roles, and there were a ton of brand new jokes that landed so perfectly. But overall, I think the plot is a little muddled in comparison to the original, and considering it is a sequel and there is already something that we have to compare it to without even trying, this one doesn't really measure up, in my personal opinion. But what is undeniable is the Halloween factor of this movie. This franchise is perhaps the first Disney movie you think of when you think of Halloween, and so to have this movie is an expansion upon an already very beloved Halloween movie. And so yes, it is definitely going to break into the top 10 for me, and I would definitely recommend a watch. Next, moving on up to number seven on my list, is the movie Cruella. Now, Cruella tells the backstory of the iconic fashionista Disney villain, showing how Cruella grew up as a very spirited little child, <laughs> and eventually came to work for the Baroness, who was one of the biggest fashion names in London. Cruella breaks off on her own and creates her own label under her own name, and has to fight against the Baroness for who will be the biggest fashion icon. This movie did such a great job at telling Cruella's story. It is so well done, the soundtrack is fantastic, everything about this movie I truly, truly love. And you also get a part of the spooky factor in there. I definitely think audiences will get those little creepy vibes from time to time, especially in a lot of Cruella's fashion sense. There is a ton of great wardrobe, hair, and makeup for actress Emma Stone, who leads this movie, as well as for Emma Thompson, who plays Baroness. And so I think between all of the really great music and also the kind of spooky plotline surrounding the character of Cruella, this one definitely belongs in the 31 Nights of Halloween. Next, moving on up to number six on my list, is Maleficent 2, Mistress of Evil. Now, I absolutely loved this movie, I'm not gonna lie. Now, Mistress of All Evil is, of course, the sequel to the original Maleficent movie, starring Angelina Jolie. This movie tells the story of Aurora and Philip planning to get married. Upon the two getting engaged, Aurora is brought over to the castle of Prince Philip's family, where we meet his mother, the Queen, who becomes our new main antagonist in this film. Philip and Aurora do have a very pure love story between the two of them. However, the majority of it does get politicized and shoved in the middle of this giant war between the kingdom of Prince Philip's family and Maleficent. And all of this happening surrounding a really, truly loving relationship makes for such a great storyline, and a lot of great complex moments from Maleficent herself. As for my opinion on this movie, I absolutely love it. I think this one is even better than its original. I love the brand new storyline, I love the characters, I love the costuming, the sets. This entire movie was so well done, and I'm not gonna lie, I often disassociate it from the Sleeping Beauty franchise. Like, it very much just gives me brand new characters, but with the names Maleficent, Aurora, and Philip. But regardless, I think it's a fantastic movie, and definitely, definitely offers you some spooky vibes, especially when we meet some characters who remind you of Maleficent. I'm trying not to spoil, I'm so sorry. <laughs> but yeah, I think this one also offers you everything you need in the spooky season, as well as giving you some iconic Disney villain magic. But with that, friends, we've reached the top five. I'm so excited. I love these movies so, so much. At number five on my list, is Something Wicked This Way Comes. Now, Something Wicked This Way Comes tells the story of two young children who are best friends. As they are living their lives in a small town, a certain creepy carnival comes to town, led by the evil Mr. Dark. The two kids, as well as a lot of the town, end up attending this carnival and experience some truly terrifying things that Mr. Dark has in store for them. Mr. Dark tempts the townspeople, trying to offer them their deepest, darkest desires, with certain kids wanting to grow older to experience adult things, and adults wanting to turn back the clock. 
Well, these two children must eventually face their greatest fears in order to defeat Mr. Dark and the carnival, but who knows whether or not it will return to the town. Oh, I love this one. This is such a great movie. I have nothing but good things to say about Something Wicked This Way Comes. This is one that I watch hands down every single Halloween. It gives you all of the scary, spooky energy that you need. As for its impact on Halloween, it is the perfect Halloween movie. But the one thing I will say about it and why it doesn't rank any higher is that it can be a little frightening to some younger viewers. There are definitely some sequences in this movie that are a little spooky, a little scary, you know, something that younger children might not like. But I am a big fan of horror and a big fan of all things Halloween and spooky season, and this movie is right up my alley. I love and adore Something Wicked This Way Comes, and I think every single person should experience this movie at least once around the Halloween season. Next, moving on up to number four on my list is The Nightmare Before Christmas. I love this movie. Oh my gosh. Again, only the second video on my channel ever talking about this movie, but I love Nightmare. Now, Nightmare tells the story of Jack Skellington, who wants to experience something different than Halloween. Year after year, he is the leader of the Halloween holiday, and so eventually he ends up traveling on over to Christmas Town, trying to take over the holiday of Christmas and bring it to the people of Halloween Town. Eventually, plans do go awry, and Jack has to save a few of his friends from Oogie Boogie, including the beautiful Sally, who has a very big crush on him and who he likes quite a bit in return. I think this movie is so quintessential Disney Halloween that it isn't even funny. I mean, to the point where Jack and Sally are literally meet and greet characters within the Magic Kingdom for Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. I absolutely love these characters. I love the music in this movie. It is just pure Disney Halloween fun. And again, even to the point where Haunted Mansion Holiday happens every single year over in Disneyland, where the regular Haunted Mansion has a very special overlay where Jack and all of his friends can be seen temporarily taking over the mansion. I absolutely love The Nightmare Before Christmas. I have nothing but good things to say about it, and also recommend it very highly surrounding the Halloween season for any Disney fan. Next, we move on up to number three on my list, which is The Adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad. Now, for any of you who know me, you know I absolutely love this movie. And the only reason I can't rank it any higher is that all of the spookiness surrounding this movie only happens in half of the movie. For those of you who don't know, The Adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad is one entire animated movie, but it's split right down the middle with two completely different stories. These two stories together make up the entire runtime of the movie, but they have nothing to do with each other. <laughs> we start off with the story of Mr. Toad, which I'm gonna be completely honest, is not the reason why this movie makes it onto the 31 Nights of Halloween, as Mr. Toad has a lot of manias, which are obsessions with a lot of different things. Eventually one of them becomes automobiles, and he goes through this entire crazy plotline where his house is almost taken, and I definitely love Mr. Toad, but I am in full Halloween mode and need to talk about Ichabod. Now The Legend of Sleepy Hollow tells the story of Ichabod Crane, who is a schoolmaster coming to the town of Sleepy Hollow. He ends up falling for Katrina Von Tassel, who is the daughter of a very wealthy and influential man in town. However, their romance sparks a love triangle as character Brom Bones also is very interested in Katrina Von Tassel. Eventually, at the big Von Tassel party, Brom Bones tells the story of the creepy, legendary Headless Horseman, who was a Hessian soldier who lost his head, and he rides around on Halloween night trying to find one to replace his own. Well, eventually the party ends and Ichabod has to travel home through the dark forest, <laughs> where he actually comes face to face with the legendary ghost. And in the end, it's never truly given to you whether or not he survived that frightful encounter. I absolutely love this film. There's truly nothing that I love more than classic 2D animation, and especially 2D animation surrounding Disney and Halloween. This one would absolutely rank higher if only Ichabod had his entire movie just on his own. Oh, how I wish. But I also do love Mr. Toad, so I'm not gonna knock it too much. <laughs> With that, friends, we've reached number two on my list. At number two, is The Haunted Mansion from the year 2023. This movie is fantastic. This movie tells the story of Ben, who has tragically lost his wife, but through some strange events, he ends up finding himself trapped within the Haunted Mansion, along with a lot of other 
curious human friends. <laughs> Eventually, he and his human friends must help the ghosts in the Haunted Mansion from the very spooky and mysterious Hatbox Ghost. Throughout this movie, we see a lot of Disney Haunted Mansion iconography, including but not limited to the Stretching Room, Madame Leota, the Dueling Ghosts, the Black Raven, and even a cameo of both the Florida Mansion and also the mansion over in Disneyland in California. As for my opinion on this movie, I absolutely love it. I think it is it is perfection. It is such a great film. It gives you all the great moments of comedy. And when you happen to pair all of that together with the iconography of the Haunted Mansion attraction, you are absolutely in for a treat with this incredible Disney movie. Oh, but with that, friends, we have reached number one on my list. At number one on my list of the 31 nights of Halloween, is Hocus Pocus. Yes, friends, there is no other movie that could take the number one position on my list of Disney Halloween movies. Hocus Pocus is absolute perfection and is absolutely a multiple watch every single Halloween season. <laughs> Hocus Pocus tells the story of the three Sanderson sisters who curse the town of Salem to return when the black flame candle is lit. Eventually, 300 years later, the candle is lit by Max and his friends, who end up spending Halloween night trying to defeat the sisters and save the city of Salem. As for my personal opinion, you guys all know I am absolutely obsessed with this movie. It is just pure Disney magic and pure Halloween fun wrapped up into one. I absolutely watch this multiple times every single year and have absolutely no reservations in saying that I recommend you watch this movie for this Halloween season, especially if you haven't already. And if you'd like to hear me talk a little bit more about the three iconic Sanderson witches, you should totally check them out in my ranking Disney Halloween characters as I go into quite a bit more depth on these three lovely witches. Whew, but with that, friends, we have ranked all of the Disney movies in the Disney and Freeform 31 Nights of Halloween. Thank you so much for joining me. I had so much fun talking about all of these wonderful Halloween movies. And if you liked today's video, make sure to like and subscribe down below so that way you never miss out on future magic from me. And you are really not going to miss what I have coming up because I am so unbelievable excited for the next two weeks of videos. Next week's video is a full costume reveal and tutorial on how I was able to create my costume, which I still have not revealed to you, but you you should be watching out for this week's videos because answers are coming, I promise. <laughs> and then the following week after that will be a full vlog of my experience at Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party going in full costume. Guys, I am so unbelievably excited and we are finally right smack dab in the middle of Halloween season and I could not be happier. Again, if you'd like to find me on any of my other social medias, my handle is at Nikki Mara with two Y's and two R's and you are sure to find a ton of more spooky content on all of those platforms as well. Again, thank you so much for joining me. I had so much fun. So with that, friends, I'll say stay spooky and until next time, I'll see you all real soon.